Great start to April. The Dow surging 329 points on Monday, now only 570 points away from its all-time high. Now, a few things sparking today's rally. New hopes for a trade deal between the United States and China. Also, good economic news on manufacturing and construction spending. So, is there enough good to keep this rally going? Let's ask market watchers Melissa Armo and Gary B. Smith. Melissa, what are your thoughts here? Are we going to are we going to get to that new high real soon? Great start to April. I don't know what you mean by soon, but here's my prediction. We're looking really good here for the market to hit up and make brand new highs in the first half of 2019. So that's what I'm seeing here now because we're only about 2% off the highs, and that was an unknown it coming into January. But the market has continued this rally. The gap up today was huge in the pre-market, and we held it. Great sign here. We want to see some follow-through. And I'll tell you this, earnings season starts next week. So between that and good economic data, that may be the only catalyst that the market needs to get over the high. We've been thinking, well, we have to have a trade deal. We have to have a trade deal. Not necessarily. The market is just getting bought. Although, Gary, you know what? There was good news on that front. Uh, China extending a couple of olive branches. They, they've banned all fentanyl. They did not hike uh, tariffs on U.S. autos and, and parts that they were scheduled to do. Their top trade representative on his way to D.C. probably has landed already. So there's good movement there as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I tend to agree with Melissa up to a point. First of all, I agree with you. There is good news. Anything not bad on the China front is viewed as good right now. And I will give her a, a, a hat tip on this. Uh, last time Melissa and I actually were together, I can't remember if it was with you, Charles. She called the rally when it looked like the bottom was going to fall out right around Christmas. So uh, she she really nailed that one. I think she's going to be right until we reach the old highs, then I think it starts to peter out. Here's my number one worry, and maybe it's just me because I'm kind of in the housing market, if you will. Luxury housing, high-end housing has cratered, and I don't care where you are. If you're here in mid-southern Florida, if you're along uh, Route 95, uh, Interstate 95 in Connecticut, if you're up in some of the great suburbs of New Jersey, you just see on Zillow uh, a decrease by decrease by right. decrease in what people are asking. That's a warning sign to me. Melissa, we've got the jobs report on Friday. Every month, that's the singular most important economic data out there. Uh, today, we got a report on manufacturing, employment, part of that surging. How critical is it that we keep seeing wages go up, that we know that the American consumer is strong enough to keep lifting this economy? I don't even think that's that critical. As long as the number Friday isn't bad, I think that the market will rally. In other words, what we expect, fine, good, fine, better than expected, great. As long as it's not worse is what I'm seeing for Friday. Again, because we have so much momentum going into the beginning of this week and the beginning of the month and again, earnings season coming up. And I will say this, as far as Gary's talking about the housing market, did you know that you could still buy a house and put 3% down? <laughs> It's shocking to me. So we still have people that are lending. And one of the things that you saw today is MasterCard went up to 239. Visa went up to 158. Both of those banks made brand new Maltem highs today. Now they are raising their fees on companies. So that's one of the reasons. But I'll tell you, if you have good earnings on the banks this quarter, which have been lagging and lacking, if these banks start to turn around, you're really going to see the market rip. Because the fact is that the banks lagged for most of this last quarter of last year and most of the year last year, you yeah. really didn't see the movement in the banks. And you will have a movement in the SPY with the banks. Right. Well, banks have been perennial on the performance for a while now. Gary, before we wrap this up, then, we're, you think, OK, we rally, we test the all-time high, you get some profit taking in there. That's your moment of truth. What could get us through that point? What would we need to get through there other than the fragility in housing? Well, it's going to be have to be really two things. You're going to have to see something uh, uh, substantial on the China front, and you're going to have to see the Fed holding pat. The problem is, uh, let's take China out of the picture. I think something's going to get done there. The problem is, if things really start heating up, per Melissa's argument, wages start to rise, the Fed's going to get back off their dovish stance. They're going to say, oh my gosh, we need to get ahead of this curve and yeah. raise rates again. That's that's really going to be the critical, uh, right. critical area. Then. Well, it's fun so far, and both of you have been very great yeah. throughout all of it. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you again real soon. Meanwhile, folks, Democrats threatening subpoenas as they demand the release of the entire Mueller report. But could it backfire politically? That's next.